This conference will now be recorded. Right, thank you, Rolanda, um, and thank you to everyone for joining today. Um, my name is Helen Latcham. I'm the coordinator for the MESH site. I'm based in London in the UK, um, and I work as a freelance engagement consultant. So I've been the coordinator for MESH um, since January, and I work a sort of around two days a week on the project. So I'm here today to introduce you to the MESH Community Engagement Network. I just want to um, begin by um, talking to you about what this webinar will cover. So I'm going to start with talking about what MESH is and why it exists. Um, and then I'm going to move on to talk about how it might be useful to you and to your colleagues. And then I'm going to give a quick tour um, of the site. And then at the end, we can move on to some questions, um, either through your microphone or if your Wi-Fi is a bit up and down, then maybe in the chat box. So let's start with what is Mesh? So Mesh is a free open access website for people involved with community engagement with health research. So the idea is that it's a collaborative online meeting place for sharing resources, for networking and for discussing good practice and engagement. It was um, launched in 2016 um, by the Wellcome Trust. Some of you may have heard my name before. I used to work at the Wellcome Trust and I used to um, manage the international engagement program there. And so when I worked there in 2006, um, I worked with the, the Global Health Network to set up MESH. So MESH is hosted um, on the Global Health Network, which is a broader network of sites. Um, the idea with the Global Health Network and therefore with MESH really was that it was set up to sort of allow people in research to have access, all have access to the same um, guidance, tools, resources, training, and importantly to each other. So the, the founder of the Global Health Network, um, a researcher at Oxford um, called Trudy Lang, um, she, I think she was working on clinical trials in Kenya and she realized that a lot of different teams who were working across clinical trials um, in that region, in that country, at sort of were having similar problems with their research and therefore um, you know, needed similar solutions. And she really felt that the key was to sharing resources. So now the Global Health Network has a, a, a lot of different sites, a lot of them based on research area, so like Zika, for example, or HIV, um, but lots of them on research related concern. So it could be research ethics or pharmacovigilance or in the case of MESH, community engagement. So how might MESH be useful to you? So MESH really is for anyone planning, running, evaluating or doing anything to do with community or public engagement. So it probably seems like a good time for me to maybe say something about community engagement while we're talking about it. Um, I, lots of you may use different terms um, or, or lots of different individuals and organizations use different, di different terms to discuss it. So it could be public engagement, it could be community engagement, it could be public outreach, public and patient involvement, participation. There are lots of different di different terms, but actually on MESH, we, we don't exclude any of those things. We're sort of open to all the different definitions, really. Um, and the idea that is that it's useful to a variety of different professionals. So it could be researchers themselves, it could be field workers, it could be research nurses, community leaders, different people working in research admin, or even community members themselves or artists or people working more broadly in civil society. Um, back in 2016, when I worked at the Wellcome Trust and I was working to kind of support people um, with their engagement practice, particularly in, in low and middle income countries, I found that um, people working community engagement with research are quite often working sort of in isolation. You know, they could be the one person in their program or in their center who's been tasked with with you know kind of community relations and that, i sort of felt you know that's a big task and it's actually a really difficult area to sort of invent from scratch or work out what you need to do and that you know in any profession that we have it's really important to learn from other people's experience and actually i felt that community engagement professionals and public engagement professionals needed to be part of a professional network themselves and have support from their peers Hence why MESH was created, to bring people together and to share, to share work. 
So that's my introduction over. I'm going to move on to give you a tour of the site. So welcome to Mesh. I hope all of you can see the home page here with all the pictures at the top. So as I said, important for Mesh is that it's free to use. Um, anyone can access it. You can just go straight on and explore all the resources and look at everything that's on there. But what you can also do is become a member. And I would encourage you all to join, to join the network um, and become a member of Mesh. Um, you'll see, I think, at the top where it's uh, where it says "Welcome to me." It will there'll be a button that says "Register" um, for all of you if you go on to Mesh. Um, if you become a member, you can post articles yourself, papers, reports, that kind of thing. You can start and join discussions, and you'll receive our monthly newsletter, which gives you a kind of rundown of the new things on the site. It gives you highlights of events, activities, training courses, and things in the field. So I will start probably with the most important area on Mesh, really, which is our kind of resource library or our body of, um, of our kind of knowledge hub. So within this resource area, um, everything has been sort of curated, edited and tagged really carefully to make it really easy to access. Um, and, for, you know, for, all, for all, all different people and different types of professionals, um, the resources on Mesh have been categorized in a, in a variety of different ways. So if I just hover over the resources tab, you can see here that it very much depends what kind of material you're looking for. So it might be that you're looking for articles from published literature, or you might be looking for kind of case studies, reports, reflections of, you know, based on people's other people's engagement projects that they've run. Or you might be looking for really practical guides and tools on how to do a certain aspect of engagement or how to evaluate engagement. And as you can see here, you can go straight into those types of resources. The resources are also categorised according to geography, so by region and by country, and also by science and health topic area, or even by community engagement method or approach, so the kind of thing you might be looking to do. I will give you an example um, and show you what I mean. So say, for example, you want to find a project report on some work that someone else has done in a certain area. You could go to uh, project reports and reflections. And you click on there, it gives you a brief introduction explaining what is available through this page. And you would say, OK, um, I've heard people talking about digital storytelling and, it, and, and how that can work really well engaging communities. So you would say, click on under methods of engagement, digital storytelling. And here you then get a list of the resources which are looking, which are using that methodology here. Um, and so if I scroll down, you can see there's one here, which worked with young people um, living with HIV in Zimbabwe. So it's run by a researcher called Rashida Farand. Um, and here you can see a reflection on the project, which starts with kind of what the aims of it were. Um, and then it has some nice videos embedded here where you can watch videos from the project, um, watch the whole film that was created. And also um, up at the top on the right here, you can see there's some embedded resources. So the facilitation guide they created to go with the project and the training manual that was created are also here for you to download and have a look at. Um, so as you can see, we do try to make, try and put resources on Mesh that are multimedia. So there's different ways of kind of exploring material and to make it a bit more interesting. If I scroll to the bottom, here you can see in underneath the categories, that actually all resources, as I said, they're tagged and categorized. So um, you, you can find it, um, you know, everything in for lots of different directions. So, for example, if you'd said, I want to look at, you know, uh, I want to look at all resources in Zimbabwe, then this project also would have come up. Or I want to, you know, look at everything, all projects that influenced policy, then this would also come up. So you can see how the tags would take you there. Um, because actually there's a category, there's a way at the top here, you can see it says all resources, so you can just go to all resources and then just search through that way. So moving on from the resources section, I just want to talk to you about some other work that Mesh does and look at some of the other tabs on the site. 
So we're going to move on to the themes um, tab. So themes are curated areas where we've pulled together resources on a particular area of practice in community engagement. So for example, some time ago, there was an evaluation month on MeSH where we particularly wanted to look at the methods and techniques for measuring the impact of engagement. Um, it's an area that people often ask about and, and uh, people often looking for very practical guides and tools and examples in how to evaluate their work. So for each of the um, each of the resources within the evaluation theme, there's a little mesh introduction to explain the methodology and to give you kind of an accessible start um, into that area. So I'll show you if I click on evaluation here under themes. You can see as it loads um, that there's a navigation map for all the resources here. So this is really a way of, of, again, you finding your way to the thing that you're looking for. Um, so at the top, as you can see, you could click all evaluation resources to see everything listed, but actually it's often easier to, um, to kind of get to where you want to a little bit quicker than that. So for example, if you were looking for a particular method or approach, um, someone had mentioned to you theory of change um, as a way of measuring a program or a project that you might be doing you could say, okay, under the methods and approaches, I can see there's two theory-driven evaluation approaches and one of them is theory of change. It gives you a little introduction here to, so that you can see you're in the right place. You click on theory of change and it gives you a list of the resources under that area. Um, really the idea is that, you know, you end up with an accessible introduction to the topic um, and you end up with videos and embedded papers and that kind of thing. Um, if I show you the mesh introduction to a theory of change here, you can see it just gives you a nice little introduction here. Um, there's a, a little video explaining theory of change by UNICEF um, and there's some embedded papers that you can then download and read as well to give you an introduction. Um, What's interesting at this stage, I think, is to show if you look at the, the ribbon at the top, we've popped back into the resources tab, even though we went through the themes. And again, this is this explains and sort of reiterates the idea that all resources are in that resource library and they're all categorised. So actually, if you'd gone to resources and you'd gone to guides and tools and you'd gone to evaluation, you also would have found um, this same article. Um, so so hopefully you'll get to where you want, whichever way you come to it, I suppose, is the, is the message. Right, so I've shown you resources and I've showed you ways that resources are categorised under some of the themes. If we move on to some of the other really useful areas of MeSH, so a really key area is learning and training. So this learning and training tab is a collection of areas which signpost you to a variety of different opportunities and resources. In particular, we have um, e-learning here. Um, e-learning or online learning is, is really popular on the Global Health Network uh, more broadly. Um, they have a professional development uh, scheme and they have a number of different online courses um, all around clinical research mainly. Um, so if you're interested in, in courses around clinical research um, and research broadly, then do have a look at the Global Health Training Center. But here on MeSH, um, we don't have a, a MeSH course yet, but it's something that's in development. In particular, two members of the network are currently working on a um, introduction to visual participatory methods in engagement, and that will be um, launched towards the end of the year. Um, but in the meantime, this e-learning section here is a really clear list um, of, and signposts you to lots of different courses that are available um, online and from lots of different uh, places so they're really broad you've got media skills you've got science of journalism and communication um, you've got you've got all sorts of different things related to um, related to, you've got social media analytics etc and it tells you how much the course would cost how to access it and it gives you a bit of introduction there um, and again similarly if i move on to training opportunities for community engagement here you can see more formal educational opportunities, um, including things like master's programmes. 
um, and you can see they are organized by continent so you can again scroll down it tells you how long the course is um, and it has a link through to the website where the course is available um, so you can see what um, direct training and, and uh, educational opportunities are available now another really um, important area for MESH's work um, is um, our work around um, events, both, um, both upcoming events that are happening, but also past events. So for us, um, workshops and events, conferences, it's not only about signposting to things so people know what's happening um, around the world, but it's also about helping people to prepare for upcoming events and capture learning and continue their networking after the event. So first, if we have a look at um, upcoming events, just because that um, gives you a sense of, um, again, how we signpost to those kind of things. Again, they're by continent, um, and you can see a lot of them are workshops um, and conferences and that kind of thing, all related to engagement. But what also is really interesting and would be useful, I hope, to many of you in the future would be our previous events. So under this section, you can see they're organized by year. Um, and th these are past events that all have material on MeSH and which used MeSH as a kind of facilitator or um, a way of hosting, I suppose, um, for their meeting before and after their event. So if I give you an example again, um, in 2017, um, the Wellcome Trust held a large international engagement workshop um, about uh, scientific complexity in, in public engagement. So you can see if I click on here, it takes you through to the site where all the meeting resources are hosted. And it gives you a really nice summary of the discussions at the meeting. Um, it, gives, it gives you some visuals um, and some videos of the presentations that were given. And then Helen, the sorry. Bottom. Just to let you know, yeah. there's a slight delay when you open ah. for where we see, just to make you aware of that. Oh, okay. Oh, so I should go slower with 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 scrolling on the screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Apologies. I'll slow down a little bit. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you, Rolanda. So as I was saying, we're now on the screen, um, which which is showing some resources from a past meeting. So um, you can see here that under the workshop that happened, there were all these different themes were, were um, discussed and there are articles, resources and presentations all under these different areas. Again, they're all in the resource library, so you would also find them if you were looking that way. So um, I should say that if you are holding an event or workshop, then do consider using MeSH as a pre and post um, event hosting area. You can, you can put your meeting up on there, you can put the agenda, you can put your pre-reading and links to that. Um, and you can op even open a discussion group to allow your delegates um, or attendees to come on and to discuss um, or network together prior to the meeting. Um, as well as, you know, if you write up any of the notes from your meeting and reporting, you can also put those onto MeSH and it allows your the people that attended to go on and to continue to speak to each other and to continue to access the resources. So this seems a good opportunity for me to show you the discussions tab. So if you can all see the discussions page now, um, there are both closed and open groups. So um, for example, you could create a closed group for your meeting so that only the people you'd invited your meeting could go in and, and, and discuss. Um, and you could add your agenda and uh, people could discuss. So I just click through. You can see, for example, a workshop was held in 2017 um, about evaluating community engagement, engagement, and it was a closed group. Um, and people used this space prior to the workshop 
to go in and actually they used it to determine what the agenda of the workshop should be. So they used Mesh to um, allow people to post articles and to um, open lines of discussion. Um, and then they, they worked the agenda out from this closed discussion group. So I'm going to move on. I hope it's not too delayed and it hasn't been too confusing looking at the screen. At the end, if you'd like to ask questions about a particular aspect of the site, I can go back and show you more information. Now, as I, as I talked about in the introduction at the beginning, I think one of the most important aspects of MESH is, it, is being part of this professional community, this part of professional community of people working on community engagement. So what we're really keen to do is to encourage collaboration and, and also to really show how many fantastic people and projects there are across the world. So we have a particular tab for this, which is matchmaking. Some of you may have spotted matchmaking when you were looking and, and wondered if it was some sort of science online dating. Well, it kind of is a bit like that. Um, uh, the idea is that um, you can put yourself on our matchmaking collaborators map. So I will click through and just let that load. And hopefully you can see the map there. So the idea is that this map has lots of, um, you can see MESH project reports. So again, if you want to find your project reports by clicking on the map and seeing what happened in those countries, then you can do that. It also has uh, people on here. So people who are part of the professional network who've added themselves. Um, so if I give you an example, let's have a look. Southern Africa, uh, Botswana. So there's, um, you can see there's a person here, the uh, a science communication and engagement uh, professional working in Haveroni in Botswana. Um, and it gives you details about them, their expertise area, where they are, etc. So add yourself to the map. So as well as becoming a member of MESH, please add yourself to the map so we can see where you are. And then also, if you're looking for other people to work with and to collaborate with on your engagement work, then you can find them on the map and you can get in touch with them. So finally, I just want to show you one more area on the site. And that's the program hubs area. So this is a new area on the site. And the idea that these program hubs is that they bring together reflections from across collaborative research programs, consortia or large networks. The idea is to gather learning, to encourage collaboration across those networks and to showcase the diversity of great work that's happening. So H3 Africa will soon have um, a program hub on MeSH. It's in development at the moment. And if you want more information about the content of that, then I think Paulina Tindana is the person to get in touch with. Um, but as you can see, this page, there's the uh, H3 Africa section where you'll be able to click through. There are already some resources on MeSH um, relating to all of your different programs. Um, and there are some project reflections and reports. Um, again, it's all under the resources section already. So if you go to resources and you, you know, search for genetics and genomics, then you will find um, everything there. So we've come to an end of the, of the tour. Um, I just want to conclude um, by asking you really to tell your teams, tell your colleagues, tell your friends about MeSH. Um, MeSH is shaped and led by its users. So it's only what everyone makes it um, and how everybody chooses to use it is what it becomes. So everything is in development all of the time. So please give your feedback, suggestions and additions. Tell us what's missing. Tell us what you'd like to see. Tell us what's incorrect. Um, and it'd be really great when you're telling people about MeSH or about community engagement um, under the About tab at the top here. If you click on about, you will see that the first thing here is a little introductory film. It's only one minute and 43 seconds long. Um, so please do use that film, show it at events, conferences or meetings. If you want to give an introduction to MeSH or if you want to give an introduction to community engagement, actually, because it talks about what is community engagement? What do we mean by it? It's nice. It's got lots of different projects across the world showcased. Um, and it's quite a useful way to start a conversation um, about community engagement. 
So join MESH today, become a member. Um, you'll receive my fantastic newsletter next week. Um, and again, if you want to get in touch, you can see there is a section here called contact. You can see the MESH email address there. Um, I've got uh, my own email address as well, which I'll put in the chat box now so you can see um, and get in touch with me directly if you'd like to. So I'm going to move on and open to questions now. Um, as I said, either through the microphone, if you have a good connection, um, otherwise you can put it in the chat box and I'll try and answer them in turn. Um, also, if there are any other areas you'd like me to show you in more detail, then do let me know. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Helen. Um, so the floor is open for questions. Hi, Paulina. <laughs> yeah, hi, this is Paulina. Helen, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, oh, you're yeah, really welcome. Hi. <laughs> I think everyone will join me to say we really appreciate um, the to learn more about the, the resources that are available for community engagement practitioners. Um, I, I don't know if you have the, the last page that we developed for the East Africa Consortium. Um, I wanted to just show that to the team um, because that's something that has been on the table for quite some time now. We want to encourage um, all projects to, to, to contribute um, materials um, for us to develop um, the History Africa platform that will focus more on genomics and uh, uh, biobanking. Ah, uh, yes. I, I think you have that, yes. I just okay. wanted to show that. You mean to... the, draft, the draft homepage? Yes, the draft. Yes. Oh yeah, I can see if I can find it. Um, you just give me one second. <laughs> yes. So um, a few years ago, one of the things we tried to do with the community engagement working group is to provide a platform where we can share um, experiences, share tools that have been developed by the various projects and then use that opportunity to also um, get feedback from the projects. And um, so it's something is, is um, work in progress, but it's something that we really want to push um, ahead with. That. So um, mm -hmm. I can't see the number of people on this call, but um, would really appreciate, um, especially from the study coordinators who are currently leading most of the community engagement activities for their projects, um, mm -hmm. to, to think about um, contributing some information about their, their community engagement um, strategies and what is working and what is not, and challenges that have um, been experienced, how those challenges were resolved, um, so that we can, we can learn from, from each other and then provide that space for that co-sharing and co-learning. Um, so I just wanted uh, Helen to show you what we have done so far and also to use that way to um to for us to work together to develop this platform yeah that's fantastic i just found the page now um can you see it yes we can see it I think yes right. great great so you can see here it's got a background introduction um it gives you an introduction to community engagement across the the consortium and then again similarly to the theme areas you can see there's a map in development here which will allow people to navigate um, the resources as Paulina said it means that um, you can click through on these and then it there'll be project reports and reflections really looking at all of your work and bringing it all together um, so yeah so that's that's in development at the moment um, mm -hmm. and it's just that yeah and it will be as I said it'll be one of our key project like our program hubs um, to really showcase um, and show the work that happens across the whole consortium um, which will be really nice, I think, to encourage people to find out more from each other and to learn from each other's practice, as Paulina says. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any further questions? Yes, Helen. Yes. Hello. Hello, can you hear this me? This is Lillian from Nairobi. 
Hello there. Yeah, this is Lillian from Nairobi. I can hear you. Oh, hi, Lillian. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Good, good. Um, do you yeah. have a, Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, oftentimes, I've tried to to I mean to to access uh, great photos from uh, the mesh that we can be able to use in some materials and I don't not know whether they are subject to copyright and um, if not how can we be able to get some of the fantastic photos that uh, different colleagues have uh, as they execute their engagement projects because some of those we can use to showcase what we mean when we talk about engagement um, maybe during presentations, when we're developing maybe materials and things like that. So I thought I would, uh, I, I just need clarity on that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so that's a good question. And um, actually, there's some there's some information um, under the resources tab. There's a section about how to add resources, and it talks about um, it talks about you know the permissions and and uh, and the data that, that that is shared on here and everything is shared under a, a Creative Commons license, um, which means that you know that it can be freely accessed and shared by everybody. Um, with the images in particular, um, they normally have a credit below the bottom of them, so we like to make sure that we credit all the images and who they belong to. So my advice is that we can you know to get in touch directly with the person who um, the image is credited from and ask them if you can use it as well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can contact me if you can't, um, if you know, if you're not sure. But as I said, mm -hmm. I mean, do use that film as well because that film does belong to us, and we um, sought permission from all of the projects that are that are in that film and uh, under about that about film. And it's um, it's really nice because it really gives um, a sort of it's got music and it gives a lively introduction to different range of projects. Um, so that can work quite well as well. Um, yeah, so, okay. so you could, yeah, do let me know about images if you if you want to, um, yeah, get in touch with the people. Mm, okay, thanks. Um, Rolanda, do you think it would be helpful if I could show you where the um, show everybody where the um, Global Health um, Training Centre is? Sure, no worries. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'll take you to the broader Global Health Network um, site. And this is the area where all the different sites sit under, including Mesh. And I think it's yeah so the site's divided between the knowledge sharing hubs which of which mesh is one and the capacity development and process improvement um, where they show the regional online training and here you can see that they've got a link through to online research skills training i can't see it yet oh sorry i didn't realize how delayed it was I'm not sure if it's just me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh dear. Um, everyone's probably been very confused. I apologise, everybody, if I was moving too quickly. Um, so here, hopefully, you can see soon the Global Health Training Centre has come up. Um, and again, it's it's got a similar, fra you know, sort of overall frame as Mesh, but you can see there's a link to e-learning courses, um, professional development resources, e-seminars, um, and it allows you to um, access all of their courses which are endorsed by different organizations as you can see down the side um, and the, the the short courses um, uh, there are short courses and modular courses um, you run through the modules I believe I haven't completed them myself but you run through the modules and you um, they take sort of half an hour um, to an hour, an hour long or so to complete, and you fill in a, a kind of quiz or questionnaire at the end, and it, and uh, and if you score a certain amount, then you get a certificate at the end, and they're all free and open, and there's lots of different, they're all sort of related to to global health research, obviously. So I think it's a really fantastic resource for people to use with their teams, and uh, as I said, we're hoping to have some more community engagement and um, dedicated online courses here for professionals to use in the future.
Yes. Yes, I can see it now. Yes. But are there any other questions? Um, just just one quick comment. Um, I think for us um, as a consortium, um, I think there are two things we can we can do here. Yes, the the mesh provides an opportunity. Oh, I think I just lost you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Polina. We can't hear you. Can you maybe chat, um, type in the chat box? <laughs> Polina, can you hear me? I think she just dropped, it says offline now. Um. Maybe she'll connect again. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. But now the thing is that it's supposed to be like five hours and then you're going to Yeah, because we only allow it. Um, okay, yes, um, Le Bukhang. I also can't hear Polina. I think Polina might have to send her question via email. Okay. Because I can see Polina is on, but She's not responding, so I think it might be the connectivity. All right. Is there any other questions, Phelan? I would be more. Only more said that he's looking for short term training on bioinformatics. Oh, yes. Um, yes, and probably the um, Global Health Training Center. Um, it's not my area of expertise, but I imagine that they that they have. Um, let's have a look. You can see here I've opened the page with short courses in clinical research um, that they do. Um, they have an introduction to reviewing genomic research, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about bioinformatics, but I can find out from, I can get in contact with the Global Health Training Centre and let you know. If you want to give me your email address, Wadamu, then I can send you an email with some information. He posted his email address ah. in the chat box. Oh, fantastic. 
Oh yeah, so I see it. Thank you. Yeah, I will do. I will get in touch with you. Um, I'll I'll get in touch with the Global Health Training Centre coordinator and ask them directly, and then I'll send you an email. Jennifer Trey has also responded to his question. Um, I know for bioinformatics, um, the HEA Bionet also runs an introduction to bioinformatics course. Um, I think it's run once a year and applications is around, it opens around August, there around. Um, but I can also um, advertise that information. Okay, great. Looks like Paulina's back, but no sound maybe yet. Oh, let's just see. Paulina, can you hear us? Not sure if she can hear us. I think, um, Helen, if there are no mm. more questions for you. Okay, that's fine. Um, anyone can get in touch directly. If you, if you come to look at the site, everyone, and you feel that you want to ask me some more questions about how it works or you've got some ideas, then, yeah, do get in touch directly. Yes, I will also share the recording of this um, meeting, um, which Fantastic. is nice. It, it records with the screen as, as well as the audio. Okay. Um, that's great. I hope there's not a delay on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay. Great. Thank you for everybody's time then. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I think we're not by telling me Polina might try to join again. Um so I'm not sure if we should give it two minutes and see. Okay. Thank you. Is that Isabella? Right, I think we won't um, wait any longer. I'll just say the, share the recording um, and I'll send Pauline an email to ask her to reply to the question with the questions um, on the email Hello. thread. Hello. Polina speaking. Polina. Yes, yes. Sorry, my phone dropped. <laughs> no worries. We were just waiting for you. <laughs> yes, I was a point about some of the training modules that we've developed within history Africa that we could share, but I wasn't sure that Vicky was on the call to respond to that and whether Taiwo would also want to speak to that as well, given what we've this, the, um, developed. One we've developed for nurses, I mean, I know we have a module on community engagement, and we've also developed um, a training course for research artists committees, and there are two. Uh, um, presentations or more, uh, more, a whole module on community engagement as well. Um, 
So I don't know if Taiwo, you want to respond to that, uh, or we could take it up maybe offline and then uh, follow it, um, have further discussions with Helen um, to see how we can make this more uh, freely available. Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, that'd be mm -hmm. really good because we'll be looking at, at producing a, um, an introduction um, to community engagement available on Mesh. So we should definitely share share resources and um, and see if we can can work together. Okay, okay, okay. And I, I think um, Lillian also um, made a very important comment about. Um, um, photo sharing photos and I think this is something that we need to take into consideration when we are doing our community engagement activities and to make sure that we have the right permissions um, uh, of course because we have a very good relationship with some of the communities we work with we, we sometimes would take things for granted but when it comes to sharing um, I think mm. there are limits that we need to recognize and be able to make sure that we have um, the companies have actually given some com permission for us to use um, these images, um, especially if it's for um, educational purposes. I think most communities might be willing to share these um, resources, but that's something that we should bear in mind when we are um, taking these photos. Yeah, I think I think that's completely right. And um, I think it's something also that sort of, you know, more formal um, training and support around engagement helps with that because you can look at the ethics of engagement and it covers those kind of aspects around consent for taking part in engagement as well as consent of taking part in in um, in research. And, and yeah, and particularly with things like um, film and photography and that kind of thing. And they can be such valuable tools for people, but also it's really important to to keep control of them, as you say, and, um, and think about, you know, especially with vulnerable communities and um, and often we work, you know, end up, as you say, working in educational with young people um, and it's important to protect their, their rights and their privacy. All right, so Rashid says he's having internet connectivity issues, so we won't be able to engage with him. Um, but you guys will pick up the discussion offline. One, one last, one last question. Sure. Mm. I know, I, I know we need to wind up. Can I have one last question? Sorry, just came yeah, to sure. mind. Sure. Of course. So, um. Uh, sometimes I, 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 I feel that people find having conversations in real time helps. Is there, um, I haven't explored the mesh in full uh, to determine if there is a platform where people can actually go in and exchange. I've seen discussion in the chat room or something. How active is that? And then is there, uh, is, is, is this, um, is this renewal going to have a, a, a moderator who would then initiate uh, real-time conversations if someone had an issue and they got onto the platform, probably are dealing with a challenge and want immediate help or guidance. Is there any form of mechanism to this effect? Yeah, I mean, that's really, it's a really good question. And I think kind of the general question when it comes to things like online discussion, as, as I'm sure you know, is that it can be a really difficult thing to, um, you know, to kind of uh, to facilitate, to promote, to keep mm -hmm. live. Um, it, mm -hmm. You know, it, it is one of the areas that hasn't been used a lot um, on the site. Um, it, it needs some technical updating. So the, the short answer is no, there's no, there currently isn't a way of having a live chat on the site. I think it was sort of felt in terms of the whole uh, global health network mm -hmm. that, you know, there are lots of social media platforms and things that people use for communicating now. Um, and so it's sort of building a building a live sort of chat function inside the sites was a bit of, um, you know, was probably uh, not necessarily going to work that well. Um, and so the idea is a sort of more of a way of like uh, posting a question and then getting some responses to it over time. Um, one of the functions I want to work on is, is that at the moment, if you say propose a discussion topic, um, that there's no way of it notifying you if someone else has then posted on your discussion. 
um, which isn't very update, you know, isn't a sort of very modern way. So you'd kind of want to at least receive an email saying someone's, you know, replied to your discussion. And I think that's something that needs to be um, prepared. So at the moment, we've really used it mainly as a consultation tool. So the, the um, UNICEF were working on some um, kind of standards around community engagement, and they wanted to do some consultation with the professional community about that. And so we use a discussion group um, to allow people to comment on these on these UNICEF standards. Um, or, as I said, we've used it for um, a meeting where all the delegates are going on um, and proposing topics and discussing in that way. But in terms of a live thing, it, has, it, is, it doesn't have that facility at the moment. Um, but if people really wanted it, it's something we could think of building in in the future. Mm -hmm. Just one last point from me. Um, I know that our study coordinators are also on the call. Um, so, um, um, Helen, I'm sure you, you would have taken the, the group through the, um, the current journals that um, publish articles on community engagement. I just thought, I mean, the study coordinators um, could, could take note of that. Um, as you prepare to develop your manuscripts, um, describing your experiences with community engagement from your projects, some of these um, journals will be really good um, places to um, submit um, a manuscript to for publication. Um, Helen, I don't know if you highlighted that, um, but there are several journals um, on of community course. engagement that, that accept uh, manuscripts. On yeah, of course. Let me show you. So um, under um, the themes tab, um, you'll see where I showed you the evaluation resources. There's a theme also on funding, which takes you to a list of different funding sources for community engagement activities. And there's a theme area on journals. So if you mm -hmm. click on journals, you then get a list of um, all the different uh, academic journals which publish on social science um, and areas related to community engagement um, and ethics um, and so there's links uh, here where you can see contact details um, and it shows you all the journals with their covers here so I hope that's helpful um, So, Rolanda, I'm not sure if this was discussed on yesterday's call, but maybe we could um, share the link um, with the study coordinators um, to consider places they might want to target for their manuscripts. Do you mean share the link for MESH? Yes, and then particularly point out the journals that oh, are okay. possible they could, they could submit to. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Megan, if you're on the call, please also just take note of this. Uh, yeah, so you can also see under this journals, um, this journals page where there's um, there's an example um, of a paper from each journal. So you can see in this top one, there's it's uh, social science and medicine, um, and if you click on the relevant example. It takes you through to this paper, um, which is about uh, the uh, the Kemri and Wellcome Trust research program and about their um, their community engagement um, activities and the paper that they published on that, which is quite nice to see as part of that journal. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, yeah, so we've got um, someone in the audience who's interested in online training for community engagement. So it sounds like there's some um, online um, training available through the H3 Africa um, network that Paulina was talking about, um, that there's a, mo a module on community engagement. Um, as I said, we'll be, we'll be launching um, a module of our, a, a course of our own on um, visual participatory methods in engagement um, to, towards the end of this year. 
and then as I said in the future we'll be having um, really having a good selection of online training around community engagement at the moment um, on the global health training center um, the the research um, ethics um, course which is um, from the WHO has a module which is an introduction to community engagement on it as well I think the the course um, from Theo et al um, it's still slightly under development, so I don't think they've officially launched it yet, um, uh -huh. but it will be soon, as far as I know. Okay, fantastic. So, thank you so much, Helen. Um, this has really been very helpful, so we really appreciate it. I hope that we can organize more of such webinars share experiences across um, the out not only on history Africa but also create an opportunity where we bring in other groups that are working on community engagement um, for us to share experiences with oh you're more than welcome yes I think that's the important thing isn't it it's about not um, duplicating effort and everyone sharing because you know people have done things and it's um you just you know it's, it's always worth um, learning from other people's experience and and realizing there are lots of other people struggling with the same issues that you are you know in your work across the world and so yeah I hope we can we can continue to work together and and to showcase the fantastic work that HG Africa has done already as, as a you know leading the way in this kind of work so yeah so it's been great thank you very much everybody thank you so much Helen thank you thank you and do, everyone do get in touch if you'd like to Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. All right. All right, Helen. Thanks so much. I will share the recording with you. Um, probably via a Google um link because I think it's it's an MP4, so it's quite yes, it'll be big. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever suits. All right, thank you very much, Rolanda. Speak soon. Thanks very much. Sure. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.